Here we are at Hampi. Historically, this has been one of the greatest cities that ever happened in India. And many travelers, Portuguese, Italians, Chinese and people from Arabia, many travelers have described this city as the greatest city of the time in the world. An Italian traveler comes down to say that it is far bigger and greater than Rome. The city covered over sixty uh, miles of circumference. Among these beautiful rocks which still remains and exudes an aura of fascination, an aura of magical presence, I… I cannot wonder why they would have chosen a place to set up a city like this in these rocks because in terms of defenses and the magical presence of these rocks, the place is full of rocks, probably we will show you some shots later. Uh, it's… it's a rocky, rocky place, magnificent rocks, a whole lot of them have been broken to build structures and temples but still the live rocks which are just sitting all over the place create such a magical atmosphere even today. This place has a historicity which goes back into four thousand year BC. There are caves where even today there are images and carvings in the caves which are over four thousand years old and uh, Agastyamuni himself seems to have come, we can say in many ways because he stepped in here and did something significant here from then on, there's been no looking for this place, is there has been rise and fall, rise and fall, but it rose to its height, true heights during thirteenth, fourteenth century, during the great Krishna Devaraya era when it was called as the Vijayanagar Empire. Somewhere in uh, early fourteenth mm, century, two brothers who are uh, known as uh, Hakka and Bukka or uh, Harihara and Bukka, who were governors in the Kakatiya Empire, learned the art of administration and stuff and then they decided to come here and set up their own kingdom. This region was uh, uh, continuously in warfare between the Bhallals of the Karnataka and the Brahmini Sultanate, where the northern Mughal emperors were trying to go south. In many ways, for two hundred plus years, the Vijayanagar Empire became a bulwark to stop the flow of Islamic invasions into the south. That is one reason that the influence and the dominance of Islam remained minimal in the south and Vijayanagar Empire was mainly responsible for making that happen because they organized their armies and this is one empire, probably the only one in the country, which uh, controlled both the coasts for a period of time. From coast to coast, from east coast to west coast, entirely they controlled the territory. So, the sea trade was dominated by these people. Probably no other Indian king or emperor ever controlled the sea trade as Vijayanagar did and they dominated the place and they brought in European and Arabic… Uh, Arabian goods into the country and they traded extensively with Asia, Arabia and Europe. <clears throat> so, this… this whole uh, empire existed in such a phenomenal way at that time, the glory of it, you still cannot miss it. One thing is, uh, there is a story about how this happened, these two brothers came and uh, they were captured by uh, the Islamic Sultanate and taken to Delhi. And they were… they converted themselves to Islam. For over fifteen years they lived as Muslim… Uh, devout Muslims because that was the only way for them to survive. Then they were brought back here to take charge of this place and rule this place as representatives of uh, Delhi Sultanate. And uh, then they met Sage Vidyaranya, they formed the first step the first foundation stone for uh, the Vijayanagar Empire was laid like this. How they chose this place is interesting. This place called Anegundi, we are just little off that place right now. Uh, <coughs> here when Vidyaranya and the two brothers came, they went hunting with their dogs 
and there were five dogs and a hare. There, there was a hare, these five dogs, the king's dogs attacked him. The strange thing that they saw was normally a hare would be killed in moments if these five dogs go at him, but this particular hare stood up and fought the five dogs and kind of the ba dogs backed off looking at the fierceness of the hare. Then they decided that this is the place where they should establish their kingdom and from that basis and from that kind of symbolism that it doesn't matter who you are, if you're willing to stand up and make these things happen, you can fight back and build it. From that basis, they built this great empire which stretched across the southern uh, peninsula, covering the whole of Deccan, coast to coast. <laughs>